guys so today I'm here for my May wrap up because I just finished my last book for the month of May and I did finish it prior to June 1st which I think takes place in like a few minutes so I would like to just give you my quick little wrap up I kind of had a super unproductive reading month just because I had a lot going on this month uh, but I was able to finish my Pick Your Poison novel and I was able to finish one other book as well which I just finished a couple minutes ago so, that being said, let me get into this wrap-up. I mean, it's a wrap-up. It's two books, but it's a wrap-up. The first book I read this month was Suspicion by Alexandra Monier. Suspicion is a book that is a mix of thriller, suspense, uh, magical fantasy, and just everything is in this book. And it's pretty short, too. It's not a long book at all. I did give this book four out of five stars. I did dock a star just because of the relationship in the book. The romantic relationship is kind of problematic in the sense that it was really quick. Like they quickly developed a relationship and I just wasn't a huge fan of it but I really wasn't reading this book for the romance either so I mean if you're looking for a great love story I really wouldn't suggest suspicion. However if you are looking for a suspenseful a uh, mystery book with like magical realism, I would recommend Suspicion. I actually really enjoyed this book. I didn't have the highest expectations going into it just because I hadn't really heard much of Suspicion, which is a really poor base of judgment, so don't be an Ashlyn. But this book was like reminiscent of The Princess Diaries and the book Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. It was a modern take on Rebecca, kind of. And it just, it was, I was pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I did give it four out of five stars. I would like to say that this book almost reads like a gothic Victorian novel, which I really appreciated because I love that genre. It is modern day, but the way it's written is very similar to like a Victorian setting. Um, but yeah, this is actually the story of Imogene, and when she was a child, her parents and her aunt and uncle died in this mysterious fire, and they were actually like a branch of nobility. I want to say they were a duke or duchesses or something, I don't know. It's, I, I read this at the very beginning of the month. So uh, when she turns 17, Imogene does actually inherit this uh, estate and everything, and she never thought she was going to, and so she wasn't really prepared for it. And it's about her coming to terms with that and solving the mystery of her parents' death and all sorts of crazy shenanigans ensue. Like I said, this also has magical realism in it, which I really appreciated because that is another genre that I'm a huge fan of. So it was kind of cool to see it combined with the different plots it was combined with. The next book I finished in the month of May, and this is a book that I feel like I need like five years to talk about, is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This has 500,000 stars out of five from me. This is one of the best books that I've ever read in my entire freaking life. I, I cannot even express to you how beautiful this story is. I worded it in my Goodreads review as it's tangible. It is something you can hear, you can smell, you can taste, you can touch. You are a part of this book when you read it because that is how eloquent the descriptions are. It blew me away. I was not expecting, I mean I knew a lot of people enjoy this book but I was not expecting to enjoy it to the caliber that I have. This is just like next level book. This is, I don't even need a movie or a TV show. Somebody mentioned they were making a TV show and that's a horrible idea so if that's true, gross. But I don't even need any like visual to go along with this because I can picture it perfectly. I've never ever wanted to join um, a circus more than I have the night circus and which is funny because I actually really freaking hate the circus it creeps me out because I don't like clowns but anyway that's irrelevant that has nothing to do with this read this book if you're on the fence about it hop off that fence pal because this book will just it'll take over your life and probably ruin bits of your soul but I mean you know what's reading if it doesn't ruin your soul so many times I had to stop and take a picture of the words to send to Mel because she's read the book before so I just had to like send it to her to gush about it I, I can't get over how amazing the descriptions are I am NOT a huge fan of descriptions which is stupid because I read fantasy constantly but world building has always been my least favorite part 
of um, literature. I don't enjoy writing world building. I don't enjoy reading it. Mostly because I feel like if it takes you 70 pages to explain to me the shade of the mountainside, then you know what? I just, I got it. I got where you're at. I understand. But I don't care how many pages it took her to describe anything. Every description was wonderful. This book is just oh, breathless. I'm breathless. That's how good the story was. This is the story of the night circus, a circus that only opens at night. This is the story of Celia and Marco, two people who have been pitted against each other for most of their lives, and they don't know why. They don't know what part they're supposed to be playing in this game. They have no idea what's going on other than they are competing against one another. And that is the information that you are provided with on the back of the book, and that is the information that I am providing you with today, because I don't want to spoil even a second of this story for you. That's my wrap up. I read two books. So yeah, it was kind of short. Um, I will say I don't really have much planned for June other than I am participating, I guess this is the announcement because I never filmed a video, I am participating in the Tome Topple Challenge from Sam from Thoughts on Tomes, and I will link that video as well as her channel down below so that you can also participate if you would like to. The Tome Topple Challenge's intent is to get you to read a book of over 500 pages, I think it is. I'm a little sketchy on the challenges because I don't fully remember them because I watched the video earlier today and I'm sick. So I have sick brain. I will say that I have two books pulled aside for this challenge. The first one is The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. This book has 670 pages. I am scared of it. It's huge. It's going to, look, I can't even, like, hold it. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I don't really know anything about this book either. Kate Morton was recommended to me because I like Sarah Addison Allen and Alice Hoffman, so that is why I have this book. The next book that I will be reading, or attempting to read, is The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. This is kind of uh, apparent what it's about. This is the story of Avalon. This is actually like, you know, Arthurian mythology, but about the women of Arthurian mythology. And I think they made like a TV movie about it a really long time ago, and I've vaguely remember it. I just remember it had Angelica Houston in it. That's literally all I remember. Um, but I've always wanted to read this book. It's always been recommended to me like practically my whole life and I finally bought it not that long ago and so now I'm going to attempt to use this as a challenge in the Tome Topple Challenge. Again, I can't really remember the challenges. I remember that there are five. One of them is to read 500 pages within a week. One of them is to take a graphic novel break, in which case I will be reading V for Vendetta and uh, Smallville issue number eight is a new one coming out. So I will be kind of going back and forth between those and between these breaks just so I can kind of take a break from this dense material because it's a lot. I'm kind of vague on the other challenges. I think one of them was to read an adult book, which both of these are adult books, so I kind of took care of that already as well. I want to say maybe one of them was to read a series, a book in a series, which I think The Mists of Avalon is book one in a series. If not, I might fail that challenge. Either way, guess what time it is. Pick your poison, because, you know, hmm, pick your poison. My least favorite time of the month. Pick your poison, da 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 da. That should be the theme song. I dub it so. So, for this month's Pick Your Poison, I have pulled The World Before Us by Ashlyn Hunter. I've been meaning to get to this book for like, a year. So it's really cool that I pulled it. I'm actually kind of excited. Um, I received, I got this as an ARC back in March of 2015. Or at least that's when it was released. So I probably had it before that, but not much before because we don't really get them that often. Um, I don't actually remember what this book is about. I think she's like an archaeologist or something. Um, takes place in Northern England. Ooh, and near an abandoned Victorian asylum. I'm probably going to really enjoy this. Looking forward to it. So that's been my wrap-up, Tome Topple announcement, figure poison, and a lot in this video. Editing is going to be fun. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Uh, let me know what you guys have planned for the month of June, what you're reading, and like I said, I will link you to Sam's challenge, this way you can participate. I do know she has several other hosts on different social media platforms, this way everybody can be incorporated. Let's be friends, I love having friends, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!